We are right now in the process of aligning the two pieces for boring. Um, I have both parts, both sides of the knurling tool clamped together with a small clamp. And I have one strap clamp over here that holds it down on these two parallels down here. And we're just going to align the the bore in both parts with with uh, with a dead center in the spindle, so we get a rough alignment, uh, and then we will bore it open. I have this clamp here only tightened down by hand, so the the center can align our workpiece. Uh, when you watch closely, you can see the setup move when I go down with the with the center into the bore. Let's clamp it and now we can tighten down the strap clamp on this side. Pull back the center, remove our little clamp over here and set up a second strap clamp. I zeroed the DRO over the hole and now I'm clamping the table for boring. There we go, we have the wall hub, the UPA1 boring head set up and I took a first skim pass so, to see if this boring bar is long enough. And it's, uh, it could be one millimeter long, but it's barely long enough to reach through. So. We can go ahead, let's take a one-tenth of a millimeter cut. Okay, turn the spindle off. I always turn the spindle off and retract the tool uh, still standing because I don't want these uh, spiral grooves on the retract by recutting off the tool. The tool flexes a little bit by during the boring process and when you return it, it makes kind of a spring pass and the spring pass with a quick retract looks like a a super steep strat and I don't like that. That's the reason why I, I pull the tool back. Uh, why I pull the tool back uh, without rotation. So let's take a first rough measurement and we <laughs> crap 12.98 uh, millimeters so we can't bore this to 13 millimeters because there's just not enough material um, we make full contact on this side, but uh, barely on this side, so uh, let's aim for 13.5 millimeters. This last cut gave us a bit better uh, surface finish. As it was a pretty shallow cut. This tool also is not the greatest in the world. I should have sharpened it before. And, and we overcut. We have 13.02 millimeters. No, 13.52, sorry. Uh, Okay. Yeah. That's okay. That's uh, 40, 
inch guys, that's one sow oversized. Uh, I can live with it. This is just a pivoting pin. And it's way better than the original bore. The original bore was neither round nor on size. Okay, I turned this shoulder bolt off camera because it's just turning and threading. And I threaded it that way that the, the um, brass nut get on pretty, uh, pretty snug and it's not uh, turning from the bolt from the thread by itself. Um, you kind of rotate the bolt as a as a whole, so I don't need any um, thread locking mechanism like a, a, a lock nut or a, a second nut to to countertop this one or a. a and radial set screw to clamp it or nothing. It's just uh, tight enough. And I mounted the knurling wheels and there is almost no side play in the holder and in the in the um, scissor itself. Of course I'd already tried it off camera because I was curious and what I came up with, I have this piece, which is again the free cutting leaded steel, which is pretty crappy to knurl, as it's pretty brittle. It it tends to gum up the wheels and the uh, the, nur the actual knurling itself. Um, I used cutting oil and I used um, air blast to get off while knurling to, to get off the um, the material particles that are uh, broken out by the knurling. Um, the second one I did with um, with the air mister on the lathe and this came out pretty good um, but still this material is pretty bad to knurl but it's it's an okay knurl I would use it. <laughs> um, what really works very well for knurling is a uh, drill rod. Surprisingly, the drill rod is so tough that it produces very little um, particles and with very little particles that get broken out of the surface, the knurling gets very crisp and very clear and I have a high resolution photo of the knurling right from this actual piece and you can see that the pyramids are very much uh, formed out and very pointy and that's in my mind how a knurl should look. I don't like knurls that are not completely formed out to a pyramid. It's It makes for a sloppy job. If you want uh, the knurl not to be as grippy you can still break the tips with um, emery paper. Polish the tops up and you have still a top-notch knurl that's not going to tear apart your fingers but the 0.7 millimeter uh, pitch knurl is, is very easy on the hands. And also if you have if you design a part with knurling and you have to use your fingers to get a lot of torque, um, overthink your design. Um, it's a built-in safety in my mind. Um, you can't over torque a, knur a knurled knob or a knurled nut or a knurled screw because you will tear off your uh, skin from the fingers. And I have a comparison. Co comparison? Com ah. Here is the knurled from the original wheels to compare. Um, I will show you two pictures. On the left is the original knurling and on the right is with the new uh, Zeiss knurling wheels. And you can clearly see a difference. Both are not too bad. Um, even the, the cheap uh, knurling wheels with a lot of run up produce quite a good knurling but um, the better knurling wheels produced also way better knurl. Okay, we're over at the lathe and I have my uh, 
knurling tool clamped up in the tool post. I have it at center height. Center height of a, of a scissor type clamp knurler is not super critical, but uh, it should be at least in the in the vast uh, area of the center height. So don't be 10 millimeters up or, uh, or low. Um, I have a workpiece in the chuck. It's a piece of 10 millimeter drill rod. And I have my uh, air nozzle here. In fact, this is one of those Noga air misters, but I have turned off the, uh, the coolant. I'm just using it. There's just air, no, no, no coolant. Because uh, doing this with coolant and air is uh, super messy and uh, not now. Um, you get over your workpiece and you, you semi tighten the the, uh, the pressure screw on the on the knurler just by hand a bit, and then you take a look. And then you adjust it until you get uh, full contact, uh, until the knurling wheel produces um, an imprint that is as wide as your, um, as your knurling wheel itself. Ooh. <laughs> Perfect. And this is a bit of try and error. Uh, it hasn't. It has not to be uh, super perfect. So uh, don't get crazy about it. Um, now we can uh, run the lathe at a low speed. And move to our start. Now we get some cutting oil on there and I will constantly add some cutting oil there and my chip brush has seen better days. I tend to, do, to, to add oil on the top roller because there is nothing where you can get caught. And you start your lathe and you add some pressure. Just uh, some pressure. And now you can see that the new knurling wheels run super, super true. Um, when you remember the, the, um, the original knurling wheels in the shop talk video, this was wobbling all around. So now you can turn on the air. This is going to get a bit loud, so. And this is just to get a weighted chip, so now I can take a first pass across. Not too fast, not too slow. You kind of feel the right speed when you're knurling. Okay, once you're over, you can, you can tighten up your uh, pressure screw a bit. Add some cutting off and go back. Then again, add some pressure and come back. Now we stop the lathe and take a look. Okay, I brought the camera in a bit closer and you should be able to see 
Denurling. I, I use a, 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 a brass brush to clean it a bit. But it seems as we have a uh, pretty, pretty good uh, neural. As with every tool, there is a bit of a learning curve to it. Um, uh, let's release the tension screw on the knurling tool, and you can see the actual knurling. There is one thing that makes me pretty sad. When produ people produce a very nice knurl, um, when they they knurl, uh, they prepare the piece to knurl. They make a, a chamfer on the front, maybe on the back and relief like I did here. Then they knurl and then they call it done. Uh, that makes me sad because the knurling uh, pushes some material over the edge and uh, even if you have a, a chamfer here you still have a sharp you have a sharp corner after the knurling and it takes about five seconds to remove that here and here and make a part that looks like somebody cared about it. Um, you take it out. Now we have a workpiece with kind of a pretty good knurl. Not perfect. There is some irregularities. It would help if I used power feed. Um, I'm pretty sure that power feed would improve it, but I'm always a bit lazy to change the gears on my lathe because it's a pain in the neck. Um, but maybe I will try it with uh, power feet. Um, but so far I'm pretty happy how this works. Okay, so we're back at the bench and um, this is uh, the improved Garvin scissor knurling tool. I hope you enjoyed this. I use some rather yeah, not not standard techniques like uh, the brazing to add some material to the slots. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for watching. See you next time.